So welcome friends to uh, this presentation on cultivation theory, one of the most important theories uh, in media and communication from the 20th century. And uh, uh, we will have a discussion on uh, George Gerbner's uh, uh, conceptualization and his ideas of, of cult uh, the cultivation analysis project and the cultivation theory. So uh, we are going to uh, basically talk about uh, how uh, cultivation is important, why uh, uh, we have to deal with uh, television effect as, as, as a very separate effect from other media and about what are the different aspects of cultivation theory and how it can be uh, represented as a mainstreaming and resonance effects. So uh, basically cultivation theory is uh, uh, different from or is an answer to uh, one kind of uh, media effect theories that was that was prevalent in the first part of uh, the 20th century when when people started talking about uh, media uh, impact or media effects in uh, 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 systematic in a, in a systematic manner so basically uh, this uh, earlier the researchers were more interested about how specific messages could produce changes in attitudes or behaviors Later on, it was found out that uh, no, there wasn't uh, major changes in attitudes or behaviors. There were other kinds of changes. But this was one very important development where people started seeing media effect beyond changes in attitudes and behaviors. And also there was one uh, another stream of thought which thought that media effect was not uh, uh, very powerful or media was not very powerful. It was a, a very limited kind of an effect because they were looking for those kind of behavioral changes in human beings, which obviously wasn't there. So like the users and gratifications theory, which we discussed the other day, cultivation analysis was also the response to that limited uh, effects theory that uh, the media effects were in a different direction or they were of a different kind. So basically, uh, uh, this cultivation theory was about uh, how people hold specific conceptions of reality. So how do they perceive the world or how, how they perceive uh, 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 the world view? And it, it was found out later on, and I will uh, emphasize on that as we go along, that their version of reality or what they thought was real was very similar to what television portrayed as, as reality. So it, it was basically about how people uh, uh, constructed their, uh, uh, you know, uh, images or their uh, uh, ideas of reality. And we will find out in, in greater details about uh, uh, why uh, their uh, uh, idea of reality was closer to the television idea of reality. Because television, as we know, is, is a combination of news and fiction programs. So how these news and fiction programs together led people to have a very different view of uh, reality than it actually was or or we will uh, you know talk about the mean world syndrome as well so the central idea the central theme of cultivation studies is that the idea of social reality is closer to the television reality or the idea of uh, uh, a reality for heavy viewers of television is closer to the reality which television is portraying so uh, the obvious question is this, why should uh, this be limited to television there are three reasons and these reasons are generally provided by George Gobner himself. And this was a project uh, that he and his colleagues started in the Annenberg School of Communication in the late 1960s. We'll come back to this. So uh, these are the three reasons. The first, that the overall amount of exposure to television is much more than all the other media. And you, you, may, you, may, you might you know, uh, agree with some of it. Uh, uh, although you know, these days uh, we spend a lot of uh, uh, time on the small uh, mobile screen as well. But generally, the amount of expo even on small screen, a lot of the uh, media that we consume or video content we consume is what could be uh, very similar to the television content as well. So the first is the uh, amount of exposure to television. The second is that this exposure to television begins even before we start using any other media. So uh, a small child, for example, would be watching a lot more television, uh, you know, with, with all those uh, kids program and, uh, and all rather than consuming any other media. So that exposure begins before we use other media. Uh, television is much more accessible, so it, it occupies a central place in every house, and people uh, you know, uh, consume it a lot more ritualistically. That, that is that point of the time when we will all be in front of the television. And also television does not require literacy like a print media does. 
so uh, television is also different in in terms of its centralized mass production and ritualistic use of uh, that coherent set of images or or stereotypes that they uh, produce to appeal uh, to virtually the entire population so these television uh, images th these are all all governor's terms they uh, virtually uh, appeal to the entire population uh another term that uh, george governor uses is is that of representational realism so this is one kind of storytelling in which the uh, viewer is convinced that if certain assumptions are true then the events that are taking place there could actually happen in my own life it could happen in reality as well so television is uh, different from other media because of uh, the first three reasons i said and then uh, uh, the uh, uh, institutional processes and also the form of uh, content which is uh, uh, representational realism uh so governor's theory was based on on the observation that much of the socialization takes uh, the form of what what is storytelling and we uh, just seen that this storytelling is 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 a representation realism because uh, it convinces us that uh, given certain conditions this is what actually happens in our everyday life or this is something closer to us or this is closer to reality uh so cultivation theory was uh, developed by george governor and his colleagues as i said in in the late 60s in the annenberg school of communication so uh, by un over emphasizing certain aspects of social reality so in the original uh, version of the cultivation theory george governor and his team they were more interested about the violence on television and as you would uh, remember that much of uh, what what passes off as as uh, you know the cartoon show or kids program there is lots and lots of violence there as well so it it could be you know even even the smaller mickey and the, you know the uh, tom and jerry shows or or those kind of things uh, you know they're just breaking walls or they're lying flat or somebody is just you know uh, thrown up into the universe even kids programs has a lot of violence so uh, this is what their contention was that the uh, violent crime is over emphasized in uh, uh, television programs and they under represent other aspects of uh, life so that is how television drama affects people's perceptions of reality and as you will understand what one of the weaknesses is that that it's not always violence there are so many other aspects also but uh, later on it was uh, uh, adopted or it was adapted to include other uh, aspects apart from uh, violent crime on television so uh, 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 these are governor's words so he suggests that uh, television violence or, or 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 the television view uh, demonstrates or communicates uh, a lot about social norms and relationships also about the goals and means that this these should be my goals or these the, these are the means by which i should reach the, these goals and these are also about the winners and losers so these are the type of people or if you do this you will be a winner or if you don't do this you will be a loser and if you transgress from these social norms you have to pay this kind of a price so television normalizes or or uh, Uh, provides us that these are the uh, norms or these are the social norms that we should live by and the television violence is a demonstrate uh, it's a dramatic demonstration of these social norms so it tells us that uh, uh, you know how people have to pay for violence or who gets away with violence or who uh, or when do when do they get away with violence and why do they get away with violence and how and against whom so this is in in governor's own words in this 1976 article which i showed right at the beginning so uh, that is why uh, the portrayal of television violence has such uh, a greater impact so cultivation is not a direct effect as i said right at the beginning it's not something that you consume content and you change but it's a dynamic ongoing process of interaction among messages and context so there are these messages and i have my own context and i draw my own uh, meaning or i frame it according to my own situation so different groups their life situations their world views are are different so different people cultivate these effects different differently so it's not a direct behavioral impact as you said or not even a unidirectional effect but it, it it's something which is dynamic and, and an interactive process so they have a message we have a context and we uh, combine these two and we have our own understanding of the world or the, it, it's more of a uh, you know kind of a uh, cognitive impact or a cognitive cognitive effect that how does my view of reality change by consuming 
television content so important that this is a very very different from the, this is very different from the direct unidirectional effect that uh, uh, the magic bullet theory for example or the mass society theory for example would talk about so it's not uh, linear it's not unidirectional but it's it's uh, dynamic and it is uh, interactive and it also builds on the assumption that this same image uh, uh, you know comes over and over again so there is a cumulative impact so you have some impact uh, you have uh, uh, some understanding today and you see the same image or, or similar images later on and that's how this cultivation grows so uh, that's why this metaphor of cultivation so this is uh, uh, this materializes by the same images being repeated again and again so that is how you cultivate this effect or that is how you cultivate a world view so uh, cultivation metaphor is used because it's one way to talk about influencing because uh, without talking about effects because if i am talking about effect then it is like you know somebody dominating the other here we are talking about a social construction kind of a thing we construct the meaning based on our uh, understanding of society and based on the messages that are uh, provided to us so it, it predicts the uh, long term formation and shaping of perceptions so it's it's uh, it, it says that you know our long term idea of society about people about situations will 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 be uh, uh, shaped by the consumption of these media messages so as you can understand this is a direct response to people who suggested that media has very limited impact because we are saying no media does have very strong impact because when you were suggesting media had limited impact you were assuming that uh, media would cause immediate behavioral change no cultivation uh, is one one way of suggesting that media can have long term uh, uh, cognitive changes so these are not short term behavioral changes but long term cognitive changes so this again is a very important indicator about media impact but in a very different dimension in a very different paradigm so uh, this was as i said at the beginning a result of the cultural indicators project that these uh, researchers they started at the annenberg school of of a communication in pennsylvania usa and uh, uh, these were the three questions that these cult this cultural indicators project asked or this were these were the three uh, uh, questions that they were trying to find out that first the first and the most important that what are the uh, 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 you know constraints or what 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 are the pressures on the media producers people who uh, produce content or the institutions which produce content what are the constraints that uh, 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 you know overgird them or what are the constraints that influences the production of media content not just constraints the processes so how how does uh, how does you know for example our everyday routine of journalism how does it lead to uh, creation of that kind of a media content so uh, these are basically about institutional processes the second thing that the cultural indicators project uh, wanted to answer was that what are the dominant images or what are the dominant messages or what are the dominant uh, values and lessons that are expressed in the, in in a uh, uh, media content and the third one which is very close to uh, uh, or which is about cultivation analysis is about what is the relation between uh, the attention to these messages and people's conceptions of social reality so to put it differently the cultural indicators project uh, uh, the first part of it was about institutional process analysis so what are the power structures and the social societal pressures that govern the uh, production of media messages the second was about content analysis and trying to find out that what are the images that are over represented or which type of people are shown to be victims or which type of people are shown to be perpetrators or or which type of people are shown to be comical and so on and so forth so this is about the message system analysis and the third and the most important was the cultivation analysis and in this what gabner and his colleagues did was that Uh, divided uh, the uh, viewers into three different categories into heavy medium and light viewers and their answers on a number of questions were uh, uh, compared so the questions that they were given uh, uh, the answers were either a television answer means uh, a reality which is closer to the uh, television reality and the other which was closer to the real world so as you can understand that this is about three different kinds of people heavy viewers of uh, television medium viewers of television and light viewers of television and they were given uh, uh, you know questions and they were asked to answer those questions and the answers were either about a television view of reality 
and the real uh, view or or something with that was close uh, closer to the real view uh, of the world so uh, uh, this was you know uh, seen that uh, heavy viewers their answer was much closer to the television view and for lighter viewers their answers were much closer to the actual reality so that is what they call the cultivation differential that people who were heavy viewers of television their notions of reality was closer to the television reality and that is the crux of uh, the cultivation uh, uh, analysis or the cultivation theory as such and this leads to what is known as the mean world syndrome which is which is a, a, a direct result of the uh, cultivation theory so heavy viewers of of television are more likely to see the world as a scary place as as, as a mean place as a violent place and as a dangerous place so in in uh, uh, in short they see the world as a mean world uh, uh, kind of a thing so more people viewed the more likely they were to exaggerate the incidents of crime in the real world so if you are watching all those crime programs or on the crime shows of all different kinds then your uh, trust in people will will and you, there have been a lot of you know comedy shows also about you know how people start doubting everybody once they watch too much of uh, for those uh, crime petrol and those kind of things so this is uh, uh, very real when people uh, consume a lot of uh, violent content then their idea of the world itself is that okay every everybody is uh, so the world itself is a very violent place which might not be true so uh, this is one uh, way of it now uh, gerbner provides two different uh, uh, explanations for the cultivation effect and these uh, explanations uh, fall into two categories one is about mainstreaming and the other is uh, uh, resonance so what uh, mainstreaming does is that it it uh, first of all it, the, this is about three b's as you can see the first is it blurs the uh, traditional distinction uh, between people's views of their worlds so the distinction between reality and and television reality this this is blurred so that is because of this mainstreaming effect it blends their realities into the cultural mainstream so whatever is is uh, there in the cultural mainstream that is blended into the television world as well and the third is that television bends that mainstream mainstream so so the mainstream itself starts believing the uh, television reality so the uh, the the first is is about mainstreaming so using the uh, uh, you know these three metaphors of blurring of blending and bending uh, the cultivation uh, effect happens so so those uh, who are heavy viewers they go through this process of blurring through the process of blending and through the process of bending so constant exposure to the same images uh, they develop perspectives which are very different from uh, say for example if they were, were to be uh, listening to radio all the time so it doesn't happen with radio so if, if it doesn't happen that you know if you listen to a lot of uh, if a music all the time you you keep on singing the entire day of course you might uh, be humming that song for some time uh, uh there are we call them as sound worms so there are certain things that we, we we keep on hearing but otherwise the idea of the world doesn't change by uh, you know listening to radio a lot or or to uh, you know reading to uh, newspaper content it it is uh, uh, traditionally uh, more uh, or the impact is seen more with television and that's because of this mainstreaming effect the second effect is the resonance effect and what is the resonance effect when people see that the uh, uh, things on television are similar to their everyday realities so in a sense whatever is is happening in my real life i see a representation on television so actually since the television world looks like my my world so it must be true so this is what happens and this this uh, uh, because it resonates with their actual lives that is why they uh, consider it to be uh, a true representative of all other things so uh, so for example i find the resonance in in, uh, in news for example and then even if i consume uh, fiction then i would uh, assume that okay this is how reality is because a lot of our our understanding of society is through television and since we regard this as uh, an and a very actual representation of reality and uh, one of is, is as i said is is through this resonance effect that is why this impact is so much stronger uh, this is one of the uh, researches that they did and uh, they saw that with with heavy viewers it, it, it becomes very closer the idea of reality is much closer i'm not getting into the details of all that uh the last thing that i want to discuss here is about the two different cultivation effects so the first order cultivation effect tells us about facts 
about say for example that okay uh, uh, say for example uh, it tells us that there is a lot of violence or it tells us that there is a lot of political corruption or it tells us that there is a lot of uh, crony capitalism or there is a, uh, it, it tells us about uh, uh, you know uh, what can be regarded as facts or about knowledge so these are the probability judgments about the world so in the first order cultivation i get to know that these are the facts okay so uh, uh, political uh, people in high places they might not be trustworthy so this is one of the uh, first order cultivation effect that uh, gobner suggests <clears throat> the second effect, uh, order cultivation effect tells us about the values and assumptions that we must have so the first order cultivation effect was about reality the second was about what to do about that so it could lead to say for example okay so we shouldn't uh, trust uh, certain kinds of politicians because they are not trustworthy so in the first order cultivation effect they told us they are not trustworthy in the second order they tell uh, tell us that we must treat them with with disdain for example so it tells us about values and assumptions that that we should regard as useful in first order it tells us only about the fact in the second order cultivation it tells us about these values and assumptions so uh, what are the strengths of uh, the cultivation theory the first strength is that it combines the macro and micro level theories so it talks about the institutional effects and it also talks about the micro level at our level how do we negotiate with that or how do we uh, uh, construct meaning using uh, the messages that are provided by these uh, institutional factors so this is a major strength that it is not only about uh, micro level it is combining both these macro and micro levels the second is it provides a very detailed explanation of television's very very unique role and as as we've just seen uh, the role of television is very different because of certain factors and also because there is a cumulative uh, impact because of these uh, 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 repeated uh, uh, you know broadcast of the of, of similar images so uh, it provides us with a very detailed explanation of television's unique role it also gives us an empirical study of these widely held humanistic assumptions that if you watch something uh, uh, you know and then your your version of truth will be very uh, much closer to that so this is like a humanistic assumption this is true i mean how, how can anyone doubt that but this provided us this cultural indicators project this provided us with with a view or with a with an empirical uh, uh, structure through which to uh, uh, kind of study these uh, humanistic assumptions uh, it redefines and uh, i've emphasized this earlier as well uh, it redefines effect as more than observable behavioral changes so it's not just observable behavioral change it might be about uh, cognitive changes as well it applies to wide variety of effects issues so it's uh, uh, it, it can be uh, applied not just to uh, the uh, uh, violent uh, violence on television but it can be applied to wide variety of effects issues it can be about health it can be about education it can be about many other things and it also provides basis for social change and that's because if we understand that this is how uh, the medium works then we might work for 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 betterment of society by uh, 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 exposing people to these kind of images again and again so that their version of reality is is uh, closer to uh, what it should be uh there are quite a few assumptions uh, quite a few weaknesses of the theory as well and one of it is that the initially uh, there there were a lot of methodological limitations and as i said you know this was something which was not falsifiable so something which is unfalsifiable is not regarded as uh, very scientific the second is that it assumes that television content is very homogeneous so it might not be homogeneous say for example that that wonderful uh, serial called the big bang theory there's hardly any uh, uh, violence there so there, are, there there's uh, nothing to suggest that you know it, it's a, it's a similar kind of content so there are a lot of uh, there's a lot about uh, niche contents also which which people consume uh, differently uh the third weakness is that it focuses uh, more on the heavy users of uh, users of television so there are very many different kind of uh, users so uh, it, uh, and for them it might not be that much applicable so it's only applicable to heavy users of television as they describe and it is very difficult to apply to media which is used less heavily than television there there's a lot of media which is uh, uh, i mean not used as much as television as we said uh, as 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 far as television is concerned uh, concerned there is almost a ritualistic uh, uh, consumption of content it's probably more ritualistic than even uh, even religion for example this is something that we do on a very regular basis so if we talk of uh, uh, 
uh, other media which uh, we do not consume as heavily as as, as television and if we uh, intend to apply to that then probably this uh, might not be true so thank you so much that's all about cultivation theory